Hello friends and welcome back to our study in Daniel chapter 4. We're actually in verse 22 where Daniel makes this declaration concerning this dream and its interpretation that Nebuchadnezzar has had. It is thou, O king. In other words, we've seen here, Ty, that Daniel has been reluctant to, to, to give the interpretation of this dream to Nebuchadnezzar because he is wanting to reach the heart of the king and he knows that it's going to be difficult for the king mm -hmm. to receive this assessment of himself. Mm -hmm. He's going to be this mighty tree that's been cut down by these watchers. He's going to be this mighty kingdom that is going to lose all of his respect and all of his honor for seven years. He's going to be like a wild man eating, eating grass in the field. And so he's reluctant, and at the same time, he knows that God wants him to give the interpretation mm, to Nebuchadnezzar. Mm, mm. This is the way that Nebuchadnezzar's heart and life is going to be changed. This is God's will for Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. And Daniel is a man of God, and so Daniel is reluctantly wanting to make sure that he follows through with God's will. So, so Daniel tells him reluctantly, but clearly and directly, King Nebuchadnezzar, the vision you had of this great tree with, with fruit and its, its branches reaching out to shade the earth and all who are under it, it's going to be cut down. This is you. Your kingdom is going to be cut down, taken, taken from, from you. you. But it's amazing that there is still here even a word of mercy and assurance Powerful. to Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. He says, he says, but Nebuchadnezzar, listen, God has an objective. He has a goal with you. He's leading you. You're, you're, you're a hard nut to crack, Nebuchadnezzar, but God is reaching into your heart and your kingdom will be assured to you when you come to the realization that the Most High God rules in the affairs of men. God is eager to reach your heart mm -hmm. and He assures you the kingdom after you've gone through this experience. It's amazing that Daniel then actually reaches further and he says, Nebuchadnezzar, listen, listen, I have mm -hmm. some counsel for you. Mm -hmm. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to listen carefully, Nebuchadnezzar. This is what you need to do. You need to, verse 27, break off your sins mm -hmm. by righteous living and break off your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. Daniel Powerful. doesn't want Nebuchadnezzar to experience this, this horrific judgment that mm -hmm. the dream says is going to come upon him. And, and he's giving good counsel here. He's Turn from your counsel. sins. In fact, he's giving counsel that's the exact opposite of what it means to live in pride. Mm. Pride lives for self. Pride glorifies self. Pride embellishes self. Pride builds up and strengthens self's kingdom. And what happens when you live for self and you embellish self is you neglect others. And specifically as the king, you neglect the poor. He has, in order to embellish and lift up and exalt himself, he has neglected to take care of the poor and needy that are around him in mm. the world. Mm. And so basically what Daniel is saying is, Nebuchadnezzar, this is the problem. Your pride has made you selfish, and selfishness is the essence of of sin. Yes. And you can break away from the selfishness by extending mercy to those around you. And he does. It seems like it works for a while. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar for a year lives in tranquility. It seems like he follows um, Daniel's advice, Daniel's counsel. I mean to some degree, but then there's obviously uh, a very clear indication that even to this point, after receiving his second vision, mm -hmm. clear interpretations from Daniel, God's prophet, still Nebuchadnezzar is not converted at the depths of his heart and he says in verse 30 he's walking around this is like a year later after receiving the vision and the interpretation the king spoke and he said is not this great babylon that i have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty isn't you know, that right? what's going on here that's what he's thinking in his mind i did this this is i am i'm it i'm mm -hmm. the king and I did all of this for my glory. This is a clear verification that God's method is the best method to reach Nebuchadnezzar. God has given Nebuchadnezzar every opportunity. He's given him dreams. He's given him interpretations. He's been a witness to him through his faithful followers. This is this year of transition between the time he has interpreted the dream and the time it comes upon him is a perfect 
mm-hmm. verif- uh, confirmation, verification that God's method is the best to reach Nebuchadnezzar. Nothing else is working. Nothing. And so this, this tells us that the best thing mm-hmm. that can happen to Nebuchadnezzar right now, which Nebuchadnezzar himself mm-hmm. testifies of in this entire chapter, is that God's will will be carried out and that he will lose this kingdom and even his, his sense. He will become like a wild man. Actually, uh, psychiatrists have a term uh, for this, this syndrome that, that happened to Nebuchadnezzar. It happened in ancient times. There were men and women that, that would live very closely to their, to their wild stock, to their animals. And at times they would have what was called wild man syndrome, uh, wild ox syndrome. And mm. they would become like animals. Mm. And they're, they're thinking that this is probably what God allowed to happen to Nebuchadnezzar. Mm. He became like an ox. Yeah. He lost his sense. He lost his ability to rule. Mm. Everyone forsook him. Everyone left him. He was eating grass. He was crazy. He wasn't taking care of himself. He wasn't cutting his hair. He wasn't cleaning his yeah. nails. He wasn't doing anything. Yes. Everyone left him, Ty, except for one person. Mm-hmm. The band around the tree tells us that when everyone else leaves us, God is still there. God yes. never leaves us, Hebrews 13, 5, and He never forsakes us. And God was with Nebuchadnezzar. As we pointed out in previous programs on the book of Daniel, even though the book of Daniel is generally thought of as a book of end time prophecies and that's there and it's vital truth, there's something else happening in the book of Daniel Mm -hmm. and that is the story of God relentlessly pursuing King Nebuchadnezzar to bring him to himself in eternal salvation. It's amazing Amen. that this God of heaven has such an eye of, of singular mercy for Nebuchadnezzar. He is focused on this king and bringing him to himself. And I love it because as he goes through this great trial, as, as all of his lords and, and all of the, the even his family leave him, mm. it says that at the end, verse 34, at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes to heaven. And it doesn't matter who we are, it doesn't matter where we are, it doesn't matter what we've been through. If we lift our eyes up to heaven, heaven responds. Amen. God responds. And as Nebuchadnezzar lifts up his eyes to heaven, in that moment it says, his understanding returned to him and he blessed the Most High. He praised and honored him that lived forever and ever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. Instantaneous here. Nebuchadnezzar turns to God, he lifts his eyes to God, and he praises and blesses God because God brings uh, a returning of his understanding. Well, we see here, we see here that self-centeredness and and arrogance and self-exaltation is the precursor to insanity. And it's really, as you've said, it's the essence of the sin problem. Mm -hmm. Self-centeredness is. Uh, And then we see that the moment that Nebuchadnezzar turns his heart to the Lord and exalts the God of heaven, his sanity returns to him. He's in his right mind again. After seven years, Mm -hmm. seven years of living in this very low, horrible state of mind and just with no doubt uh, self-incriminations and guilt driving him Mm -hmm. to insanity, the moment Nebuchadnezzar lifts his eyes to the God of heaven, his sanity returns to him. Mm -hmm. And this is what sanity looks like, James. Mm -hmm. Sanity is a recognition of God's position in our life and in the universe as the Most High God, the one whose kingdom is eternal and will go on and on forever, and that that we are, as it were, nothing by comparison to God, and yet when we find refuge in Him, He lifts us up to all that we truly should be and can be. And, And what's really interesting about this is Nebuchadnezzar has had this transformation where he recognizes what is significant and what is secondary. Mm. And what he does in verse 35 is he makes this declaration that is powerful and important for us today. He says, and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stop him or stop his hand or say unto him, what are you doing? Right. Now, it's really important for us to understand what's going on here. Nebuchadnezzar is prioritizing what's the most important and what's secondary. Before this conversion, what was most important was his kingdom, his lords, his counselors, his position in society, his influence politically, and his Mm. kingship. Now what's important is his relationship with God. And everything else is secondary. Everything Mm -hmm. else is reputed as nothing in comparison to that. And once you have a right relationship Mm. with God, Nebuchadnezzar is saying, once your understanding returns and you recognize and bless and praise God first and foremost, all this other stuff, 
is secondary. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it comes, verse 35, at the same time, my reason returned and, and the glory of my kingdom and my honor and my brightness returned and my counselors and my Lord sought unto me and I was established in my kingdom and excellent majesty was added unto me. All of that has a place, mm. but it's all secondary. Yes. And what we do in this life often is we make all of that first. Right. That's the mo our influence, our position, our, our, our economic status all comes before God. Mm -hmm. And this is what Nebuchadnezzar was doing. Mm -hmm. And ultimately when we do that, we neglect the real issues of life, taking care of other people and putting other people first, mm -hmm. and we become first. And this is what Nebuchadnezzar is going through, is this incredible transformation yes. in his uh, priority of mm -hmm. God and other people. Mm -hmm. I think of uh, what Jesus had to say to all of us in Matthew 6 and verse 33, putting our priorities in mm -hmm. order, seek ye first the kingdom of God. That is first in pri priority, first in focus seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness mm -hmm. and all these things shall be added unto you. All the these things that Jesus was referring to is the material blessings of life. These material blessings are secondary and that's in God's power to provide and we need to leave that to his charge yes. and put our focus on living for God and seeking His righteousness. And that's a faith venture. I mean, mm. that is a faith venture to be able to lay aside, because we need mm. these things that we have in life to survive, to sustain us. We need these things. We have a family. If we have children, we need clothes and we need food. It is a faith venture to say, but I'm going to make that secondary and I'm going to put God first. What happens if you don't do that is those things will consume you and God will be nowhere to be found. And then he asked this question in verse 35, no one can say to God, what are you doing? Now, don't misunderstand that, friends. We can ask God what He's doing. And many times we do ask God, what are you doing? What, why did this happen to me? I don't get it. Mm -hmm. God doesn't mind us asking the question, but when we understand who God is, when we understand His character, when we understand that He is long-suffering, not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance, then the question is uh, one that is not necessary because God's reply to that question to us is, I'm moving heaven and earth. I'm doing everything I can to save you, to get you in mm. the kingdom mm. and be with me for all eternity. And then we come to the same conclusion that Nebuchadnezzar came to, and that is that all God's ways are justice, His works are truth. In the context here, Nebuchadnezzar is realizing that even though his experience has been painful at times, that God has had his best interest at heart. And through all that he has been through, God was doing what was right and best and true for Nebuchadnezzar to bring him to the Lord God of heaven to worship the creator of heaven and earth and to yield his life to him. And that's what God is seeking to work out in your life, friend, and in my life through all the experiences that we have. We're looking forward to studying with you again. Thank you and God bless.